Welcome, friends, to our time of scripture reading and devotional reflection for Tuesday, November the 1st, 2022. I'm Brian J. Monroe, pastor of Kitimat First Baptist Church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia, and this is coming to you from my office there. Just want to remind you quickly, if you find this kind of uh, video, this kind of content helpful and uh, useful, would you please like and subscribe to this and maybe share it with some friends and that'll help others find this material as well when they're looking around for stuff for their Christian devotional and discipleship on YouTube. Today I'm going to be reading three passages of scripture that are chosen from the uh, Revised Common Lectionary for this uh, time of year, and we're going to start off with Psalm 142. There'll be a devotional at the end of this as well. Psalm 142, a maskil of David when he was in the cave, a prayer. With my voice, I cry out to the Lord. With my voice, I plead for mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble before him. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see, there is none who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. And now our semi-continuous reading from the Old Testament from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit beyond the vines, the produce of the oil fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herds in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. A song to the choir master with stringed instruments. And now a reading from the New Testament from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 19 verses 11 to 27. And as they heard these things, Jesus proceeded to tell a parable because he was near to Jerusalem and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. And Jesus said, therefore, a nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten minas, which is a form of currency, and said to them, Engage in business until I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, having received the kingdom, he ordered these servants, to whom he had given the money, to be called to him that he might know what they had gained by doing business. The first came before him saying, Lord, your mina has made 10 minas more. And he said to him, well done, good servant, because you have been faithful in a very little, you shall have authority over 10 cities. And the second came saying, Lord, your mina has made five minas. And he said to him, and you are to be over five cities. Then another came saying, Lord, here is your mina, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. 
The king said to him, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank? And at my coming, I might have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to the one who has 10 minas. And they said to him, Lord, he has 10 minas. I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine, who did not, me to, not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. This is the word of God, the eternal word of God. Father, we know it is, even though it's hard to hear. And we ask that you grant us the ability to hear it, but not just hear it, understand it, and have it enter into our hearts and minds and souls, and therein work what is good and pleasing to your will, that we may give praise to you always for having provided it to us. Amen. And now from Oswald Chambers' classic daily devotional book, My Utmost for His Highest, we read the entry for today, which is entitled Authority and Independence. If you love me, keep my commands, says Jesus. John chapter 14, verse 15. Our Lord never insists upon obedience. He tells us very emphatically what we ought to do, but he never takes means to make us do it. We have to obey him out of oneness of spirit. That is why when our Lord talked about discipleship, he prefaced it with an if. You do not need to unless you like. If any man will be my disciple, let him deny himself. Let him give up his right hand to give up his right hand to himself to me. Our Lord is not talking of eternal positions, but of being of value to him in this order of things. That is why he sounds so stern. If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Jesus speaking in the gospel according to Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Never interpret these words apart from the one who uttered them. The Lord does not give me rules. He makes his standard very clear. And if my relationship to him is that of love, I will do what he says without any hesitation. If I hesitate, it is because I love someone else or something else in competition with him. That is, myself. Jesus Christ will not help me to obey him. I must obey him. When I do obey him, I fulfill my spiritual destiny. My personal life may be crowded with many pe small, petty incidents, altogether unnoticeable and mean. But if I obey Jesus Christ in the haphazard circumstances, they become pinholes through which I see the face of God. And when I stand face to face with God, I shall discover that through my obedience, thousands were blessed. When once God's redemption comes to the point of obedience in a human soul, it always creates. If I obey Jesus Christ, the redemption of God will rush through me to other lives because behind the deed of obedience is the reality of Almighty God. Let us pray. Father God, help me to be obedient 
Show me what your standard is. Show us all what your standard is that we may rise to it and in obedience and submission proclaim your truth and your gospel to all who we come in contact with. May this be the way of our evangelism. May this be the way of our living. May this be the way of our life. In you, Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray today. Amen. As always, friends, I commend you for listening to or reading or being involved with some of the Holy Scriptures every day. It is a good and necessary part of discipleship. It's part of the, it's part of the whole idea of spiritual discipline, which grows us in life with Christ. Until we can be together again to do more of the same we've done today, I bid you in the name of Jesus Christ, Shalom. Shalom.